Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. In this first episode of the scripting series we'll talk about interfaces, what they are, why do we need them and so on, and all of that on a practical example. Woohoo, let's get started. Let's say we have a solid base for a top-down shooter, like the one we implemented using those two tutorials. We can move our character and shoot. At this very moment it is time to add objects that we can shoot at. One friendly character, one enemy, and a crate. We want each of them to behave completely differently when they are hit. And of course in our head we have already ideas for hundreds of other shootable objects. Let's have a look how a typical implementation could look like. We have a separate script for each object. And each of those scripts has a method that contains all the logic that should happen once we shoot at the object. Now in our player script, as a part of shooting logic we check which item we shot and then we call the right method. Easy peasy. Now imagine how the method will look like if we'll have hundreds of items. Length of the method is just one problem, but we also introduced something called tight coupling. Imagine that you want to rename the crates method destroy to, for example, break. It means you have to change not only the crate script, but also the player script. Now imagine you want to remove 20 of the 100 shootable items you have. Not too easy task, right? To solve those problems we can use interface. It allows us to introduce something known formally as a contract. But I don't really like this word. I prefer to think about it as a promise. Basically interface is nothing more than a promise that a class implementing that interface will contain certain set of methods or properties. Don't worry, it will become clear in a moment. First let's create an interface. The only difference between empty class and empty interface is the keyword used before the name. Yep, you guessed it. For a class it's class and for interface it's interface. The only weird thing at this moment is the name of the interface. I hit the ball. Who the hell came up with that? You see, that's actually a convention. Because we very often use the interfaces inside of the regular code, we usually want a way to distinguish them from the regular classes. That's the reason we prefix their name with the letter I. The second part of the name is a little bit more complicated. In general, we want a name that will suggest that certain action can be performed on or by a certain class that implements the interface. It's not a problem for a single well-defined actions. If our object can fly, we can call the interface I flying. If on the other hand we can use the object for flying, we could call the interface I flyable. If the object can shoot, I shooting. If it can be shot, we can call it I shotable. I'm sure you get it. Sometimes the naming gets a little bit more complex, especially in terms of services, but that's a subject for another video. Let's add our first method, receive hit. It will not return anything, but it will require one parameter, rightcast hit to D containing all the information about hit that occurred. As you see, the method has no body. That's because as a part of interface we do not specify the logic, but only the signature of a method. That means each class implementing this interface can have completely different logic. That's the power of interfaces. Let's open our create script. As it is extending the mono behavior class, we simply put a comma and add the interface name. If the class wouldn't extend anything, you would have to put the interface name directly after the colon. Now you see we have an error. That's because by implementing the iHitable interface, we promised that our class will contain a receive hit method. So let's implement it. Let's do the same thing for the police unit script and the terrorist script. At this moment, the logic that should execute once the objects are shot, share common name. We can open our player script. Now let's remove the logic that was responsible for handling hit. Awesome. Now c -sharp will allow us to do some magic. Because our classes implement common interface, instead of getting each script individually, we can try to get the interface. Unity is smart enough to handle that for us. So if the object that has been shot contains a script that has implemented our interface, it will be returned by a method and will be able to call directly the receive hit. That means we don't have to list any more objects. 
the tight coupling doesn't exist, so we can remove and add as many objects as we want. The only thing to remember is that our variable is of type iHeatable. That means we won't be allowed to access any method specific to create, police unit or the terrorist script. There are ways to get the instances of these specific scripts, but you should avoid them as much as possible. After all, one of the main reasons to use interfaces is to avoid tight coupling. You will thank yourself later. Let me show you how easy it is now to add new hitable objects. Oh, before we start, if there is anything else you would like to learn as a part of the scripting series, please drop me a comment below this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And now back to the implementation. I add simple circle sprite and drop it into the scene. I create a new script, drag it into the circle and then open it. I implement our interface and a method it requires. As for the logic, let's add something simple, like the backlog. Of course I add collider. And we are done, seriously. No need to modify the player script. Isn't it fantastic? In upcoming tutorials, we'll create more useful interfaces. Hopefully, see you then. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.